going on YouTube? This is your boy, Joel Davis. If it's your first time uh, tuning in to the broadcast, do me a favor. Go ahead on and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell up top. Please like and share. Please like and share. Not to mention, too, look at the description box below. And please uh, donate to the $5 challenge. It helps out with the studio. So that way we can continue to bring you better content and also other accessories to make the channel continue to thrive. So with that being said, let's jump into this. So guys, imagine you are in the prime of your life, you're young, you know, life is going good, you just um, got a toddler daughter, your, your rap music is taking off your music career, everything is looking up for you, but unfortunately, tragedy strikes by a that is caused by a person that you would least expect to do this to you. This is the story of Raheem Grant and Sierra Harp. Now, before I get into telling you who these people are, this case is going to have some graphic details of violence. Please. Note, viewer's discretion is advised. So, Raheem Grant was a up-and-coming rapper. Now, I didn't know when his young man uh, was born, but I do know that he started rapping and doing music at an early age. His mother said he started out with doing the drums. And then from the drums, he started being at a local uh, after-school uh, program that would air on TV where the young man would show his musical talent, and he would rap. And then he went to the Apollo and won the Apollo several times on Amateur Night rapping. By the time... Uh, young Raheem Grant was an adult. He was a full-time rapper. When I say musician slash rapper, he was doing shows locally. He was had his mom as his manager. He had uh, a whole street team for marketing. This guy was on his way to being the next big thing. He also had uh, talents like Big Boy. Uh, he was doing stuff with uh, the late Doe B, uh, the late uh, Shorty Low. Uh, he was also rubbing elbows with some of the members of Outkast. He was a local legend so far, as young as he was, known for not only writing good rhymes, but also known for actually getting the crowd charged up and excited. Now, Raheem had the look that every young lady likes to see in the rap business or in the hip-hop industry. He had the tattoos, and he had long hair, and he would have a part in the middle of his hair and he would braid, have his hair braided by two braids. That was his signature look. And he also had his jewelry on every time everybody seen him. Now, this young man was also the life of the party. People said that he was always uh, family oriented. When you got past the rap persona... He was just an all-American guy trying to chase the all-American dream. So one night while he was at the gas station, 
getting some gas, he was approached by a young lady named uh, Sierra Harp. Now, Sierra Harp was kind of known as the type of girl who was, I think she did a little bit of modeling and everything. Uh, she was also on Instagram, uh, taking a bunch of pictures, had a bunch of likes. Now, she was a very nice looking woman. Sierra Harp was was gorgeous. Now, Raheem being the guy he was, very cool and cordial, uh, when she was starstruck by him. Now, it was allegedly said that she told one of her friends when she first saw Raheem that he was going to be her next baby daddy. Now, Raheem, on the other hand, was the type of guy, like I said, he played it cool, you know, he did his thing, but he was not going to let a person like uh, Sierra at first kind of like mess up his vibe and how he did things. So, when time went on, Sierra wanted to get closer to Raheem. So she started hanging out with him. He started getting her to help him with promoting his shows. You know, she got close with his mom. And he basically just, you know, called her as the one of the homegirls. Now, as time progressed, they allegedly been said, there's been two different stories. One story said that their relationship grew and they just started romantically getting involved. But versus the ID channel... On Daily Women, which also I got some of this documentary as well from, the mother has said allegedly that uh, Sierra drugged Raheem so he could get her pregnant because she was tired of the fact of the matter of chasing him and he wouldn't pay her no attention. Now, as soon as that happened, Sierra wound up pregnant. And when she wound up pregnant, she told Raheem. Now, a Raheem who's young, about to be uh, blowing up soon in the uh, music industry, been very particular of who he deals with and how he deals with him, was like, I don't think that's my kid. Uh, you know, we're going to have to take a DNA test. Sure enough, they took the DNA test, came back, it was Raheem's. So, Raheem was shocked. But like any decent guy, he went and, and, you know, stepped up. He was making sure that this little girl would know that her dad was going to be in her life at all costs. So he started uh, spending time with his daughter, focusing on being a good dad. Now, his mom was also embracing the grandmother role. During that time, Sierra, they just went and kept her around. Now, there's also sources says, because there's two different sides of the story, uh, when you look at uh, Fatal Attraction, they said that she was basically just moved in from the jump, and that was that. But on the ID channel, which I'm going to go with ID, because they've been pretty, ID's been pretty thorough with everything they do. They said that the young lady dumped the baby on this young man, and he had to have his mom help him raise his daughter for a while until she came back. Now, when she came back, he, uh, saying she had nowhere to go, Raheem knew that that was the mother of his child, and he just did not want to piss her off because she may play games to where he could not be able to see his child at all, and he wanted to make sure the child was in a safe spot, so he moved her in. So, while moving her in, and everything else, they said that Raheem had made it clear to her numerous times that, listen, we're not an item. You are the mother of my child. I am the father of your child. This is what it is. Now, Sierra supposedly uh, agreed to this. But when he started gaining popularity... Uh, starting to get to the point where women are noticing that this guy is on the rise and 
he is really getting it in on his music career, she became jealous. I'm talking about if a woman put a post about a comment saying that she thought he was good looking or he was really tr- attractive or she liked the way he did a certain, his voice sounded on a certain song, she was quick to make them, to point out to them, that's my man, back off. So that started to really annoy Raheem because, okay, I've made it clear to you we're not together. You're only staying with me because of my, my, you know, because you're the mother of my kid. But at the end of the day, he just took it in stride. Now, he kept continually being in his daughter's life every way he went. When he had time away from his music, his daughter was with him. Whenever he went to do his music, his daughter was with him. His daughter was everywhere he went when he was not doing business. <clears throat> so, anyway, after years of this, a couple of years of this going back and forth, it finally came to a head on December 7th, on December 29th, 2017, and make sure I'm right, I'm going to compare to my notes, yep, December 29th, 2017, so, anyway, uh, Raheem was basically before, but let me rewind for a minute. Let me rewind. Before all this, Raheem had been telling his mother about how uh, outrageous and jealous this girl has been. And how she has gotten very physical in his face in the past. Now, his mother was very concerned. And she said, well, son, why won't you record it? And he was like... Yeah, I can record it. She said, don't you still have a cloud? He's like, oh, yeah, of course. I still got my SoundCloud space and where I put all my music and stuff like that. She said, well, utilize that cloud for all your music and these videos of what's going on with this girl. So they'll be able to, if anything happened, it'll be able to save you in a court of law. He said, all right, cool, fine. I'm with it. So. Going on December the 29th, 2017, was a relaxing night as usual for Raheem. Raheem was chilling, uh, doing his usual, uh, smoking a little bit of weed. He also sold weed from time to time as well. So, his female friend, who is a uh, body trainer... Which at the time, and has been stated even now, they never had any unprofessional relationship. They were just friends. But she was a good looking woman. Came by to smoke with Raheem. So while Raheem and her are smoking and chilling, talking and laughing. uh, Sierra had left the room with an attitude. Now his friend had asked him, why is Sierra so, uh, acting so crazy? Like this, he like, man, I don't know. And then that's what he said, hey, Sierra, you know, um, why don't you come out here? We got company, you know, trying to get her involved. She was more like, I, right, I'm trying to take care of that baby, and no, I ain't got time to be around no company. So the tension is in the air, and this young lady felt it, and she was like, listen, Raheem, I'm going to go because I feel like that things. Are you know, I you know, I, I could feel the tension in the air basically. So Raheem like, alright man, yeah, it's cool. So after that, Raheem uh lets escorts his guests out, shut the door, goes and confront Sierra, like, yo, what is your problem? Why are you having all this animosity, negative attitude, you know, all this craziness that's uncalled for? And that's when Sierra went and stabbed him all off the rip with some type of knife. So he's got lacerations on his face. Face is bleeding profusely. 
He's recording. He said, y'all see this? I want y'all to understand. This is what Sierra Harp did. I didn't do this, man. She did this. Now, this man's face is bloodied up. And that's when Sierra comes from behind, pulls out a gun, and shoots Raheem in his back. While the bullet also goes through and shoots and shatters the glass, the mirror. Now, when this all happens for uh, 13 minutes, this man is being shot. And basically, she's taunting him. Talking about he was abusing her. She's got the blood in front of her face where you can tell these are self-inflicted wounds. I mean, it's a horror scene. And then the most heartbreaking part is when he asked to hold his daughter before she kills him. Because he said, I know I'm going to die. I'm just going to ask you, can I just see my daughter one more time? She said, no, you're going to crawl to her, motherfucker. Is that what she said? Now, this is just devastating. And then she goes and walks over to him and puts the last bullet in him. Now, Sierra knows that what she just done, after he also told her while in the process of doing this, what you're doing, you know you're going to go to jail, right? She didn't even care at that point. She knew that she had to come up with a story. So, Sierra does like any other person that's desperate. She goes... And she stabs herself in the leg like I think she messed up one of her major arteries. So she was on the verge of bleeding out to death, killing herself. But she made it look real as possible. Runs to a neighbor's house talking about that Raheem tried to kill her. And she had to defend herself and shoot Raheem. And they had to rush up to the hospital. And Raheem is there with six bullets in him. Now. When the officers first come to the scene, you know, good looking, woman in distress, stabbed up, hurt. You got this guy with all these tattoos on him, long hair, you know, the toddler, you know, in the house, which by now I'm quite sure is in somebody safely got the toddler. Yeah, it looks like we just said. Like they think in the scene, it's a self defense. But as that went on, they had to go and they had to talk with Sierra. Now, I don't have the actual footage of where they interrogate Sierra, but Sierra at first tells them everything that they want. That you would hear from someone who has fought for their life, right? Being battered. Uh, she got in. This guy who came at her. He was aggressive. Uh, he had. She said he had done uh, sand axes, and he was just out of his mind, raging. And he came after her, and she had to do what she had to do as he stabbed her to protect herself. So far, so good, right? It's sounding good. It looking good. Well, after this done went on, the mother, Raheem's mother, which I doesn't know, I don't know her name in the story, and I'm so apologize for it. Decides to go to the police station, um, for questioning because the police just want to get some insight of what she knew about the relationship. And by that time, the mother has been thinking for the past couple of days that the way they said her son died and her saying so far it was self-defense, that she felt in her spirit that this woman killed her son. So she talks to the investigators and said, listen, I don't know what this young lady told you, but my son was not the aggressor in this relationship. She was the aggressor. She was always jealous. She was always over the top. I'm telling you now. This woman is the one you need to check out. 
So, you know, like any investigator, they hear that from the from the family. Yeah, whatever. Okay. But then she tells them something that really sparked their interest. Because I forgot to tell you this on the actual, uh, uh, the first time I loved her anyway. He asked her about the, uh, what they call that. Uh, give me one second, guys. Yeah, he asked her about the, um cell phone she said did you find my son's cell phone and he's like yeah we got it in evidence but we cannot get into the phone she said well i could tell you what you ain't got to worry about getting to the phone he has a cloud and on his cloud he has everything with music and every video that he records that is important in his life and i told him well, what was going on with sierra to record Every time she acts up. So the cops was like, all right, well, let's get a warrant. Let's see what's up. So they got a warrant. Within 48 hours, they were able to access this cloud. And when they got the cloud, what they saw was four videos that showed the horrific night of what Raheem Grant went through by the hands of Sierra Harp. They saw that she was not only the aggressor, but she was also the executioner. This woman went out here and basically murdered this young man. Taunting him the whole time. And I say taunting him, I mean she's taunting him. And now, while taunting him, she even had the nerve to tell this man when he was dying. Like I told you before, and the investigator saw it too, that he couldn't hold his own daughter then after seeing that her self-defense uh story fell apart and they saw that she was never stabbed in the legs while this whole video was going on and that's when they put two and two together that this was self-inflicted so sierra Hart was arrested and we'll tell you what the charges was that she got arrested for And give me one second. Let's see what the charges were. I know it's a lot of them. I just want to give y'all the right information. All right, I can't find it here. Give me one second. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Yes, she was she was uh charged with five counts of ir of uh of assault and battery and one for voluntary manslaughter. Now this was like mad crazy uh of the charges. Now, because of these charges, she went to trial. Now this is also what happened at the trial. The trial, she uh, had people that were saying that she did this because of what was going on and her having a rough childhood. But nobody was buying it. Not to mention, too, the, uh, her own mother during the sentencing phase, uh, impact statement said, that her daughter, and I'm just going to uh, show you all that in the in the clip. Her, her mom said this. This was something else. It was a startling turn of events. A mother took the stand during her daughter's sentencing and let her have it. Oh, yeah. Channel 2's Tom Jones is live in Clayton County. Tom, the defendant's mother, asked the court to give her daughter the maximum punishment. Javita Sierra Harp's mother asked the judge to give her daughter life without parole, and she told Harp 
there are consequences when you are manipulative, when you are a liar, and when you are a murderer. With no regards whatsoever, you murdered and you snatched Angel's dad away from her. One relative after the other. I hope God don't have mercy on your soul as you didn't have mercy on his. Took the stand during this sentencing hearing for convicted murderer Sierra Harp. So we're asking that the court impose the maximum punishment. But none had the impact of Harp's own mother. You reveled in disrespect, foolery, and ignorance. Adrena Thurman gave her daughter a tongue lashing. Wherever you went, chaos and trouble was sure to follow. A jury convicted Harp last month for the murder of Raheem Grant, the father of her child. Harp recorded herself shooting Grant multiple times over several minutes in front of their daughter. Harp gave her mother the stink eye and mouthed the profanity, then called her a female dog after she lit into her. Thurman said Grant told her days before his murder he was improving his life and had new plans. I know for a fact these plans did not include you. She thinks that's why Harp murdered Grant. Grant's mother wanted the death penalty, but it wasn't on the table. You showed no mercy for my son, Sierra, and I should ask the court to show no mercy for you. And the judge delayed sentencing Harp until later this month because one of her attorneys left the case. We're live in Clayton County. Tom Jones, Channel 2 Act. Now, just hearing her own mother say that, that's crazy, isn't it? Well, after that happened, uh, also Raheem's mother also made a statement as well. S basically, I'm going to paraphrase it, saying that how she felt about the, how this woman had destroyed her life, taking her son's life away so tragically. Now, here's what's crazy about Sierra's mother. Sierra's mother, when she was making that statement, Sierra mouthed off and called her mother a bitch. Now, this is what happened to Sierra Grant after this all happened. So it came time for sentencing. Now, I said it was voluntary manslaughter, but excuse me, it was uh, malice murder. So she was uh, convicted of malice murder and five counts of aggravated assault. She was sentenced to 125 years in prison. Think about that, guys. 125 years. That means she is dying in prison. Never, ever getting out. She won't even have a chance for parole, nothing. Now, here is some uh, other things that also wanted to tell you about this, uh, this case as well. Now, she claimed that she was drunk when she did all this, but I don't know. I doubt she was. To me personally, I think she was just upset that this guy had this girl over and just was not taking her serious anymore. He was on his own. You know, he, he just wasn't feeling her like that. He was all about his child. And what's sad is there's no witness in this at all. Because this mother, his mother lost her only son. And oh yeah. Another thing is, is that Sierra Harp, which was a very talented and beautiful young lady who could have been a model, not only just an advertiser, wasted her own life because she couldn't handle the fact that she got a guy the wrong way. And at the end of the day, the guy didn't want her because he didn't feel her to begin with. And also the three-year-old child. That three-year-old child now is going to be raised knowing that his mother, her mother, caused her dad not to be here. 
her mom is the reason. And that's a lot for a young child to have to accept. So I'll give you the latest update on this young lady, Sierra Hart, because they did a special on her, like I said, on ID channel. And I thought this was a good case to give y'all to let y'all understand how crazy uh, people really are when it comes to letting their emotions get the best of them. And it's, it's sad. It really is. Now, this young lady is now serving time, 125 years, in the state prison, and I bet my wife is about to get surprised, Hawkinsville, Georgia. That's right. She is in the state prison in Hawkinsville, Georgia. And we're not that far from Hawkinsville, Georgia, actually. So, if you want to know what Hawkinsville, Georgia is, it's nothing but woods, woods, and woods. So, even if she even thought about trying to escape, good luck with all the woods, the snakes, the swamps, and everything else out there. So, that's where she's at. Good old Southwest Georgia, Pulaski State Prison in Hawkinsville, Georgia. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, I will put a link into her old Instagram pic of how people are blown away by she went from looking like a supermodel to now she has um, doubled her weight gain because probably due to stress and y'all know how prison is. It's not very nutritious. So if you're not working out or you're not keeping yourself in shape or being active, the food there actually will blow you up. This is facts. So that's what's going on. That's where she at. So again, guys, let this be a lesson to you. If somebody is not interested in you or not feeling you, don't push yourself on them because then you'll end up like Sierra Harp. Let jealousy get the best of you. Make a dumbass decision. And now you got to spend 125 years in prison with no chance of ever seeing the light of day. Again, if y'all love what I, the content that I bring, please do me a favor. Please like, share, and subscribe. Take care of yourself and each other. I'm out.